Hello, everyone. Uh, let's get started. It's already 10, already 1.35 Eastern time. And uh, yeah, so I welcome everyone to the informational webinar on uh, the ICML 2021 workshop uh, called Tackling Climate Change with Machine Learning. And uh, yeah, let's get started. First, to start with uh, what, who we are and what we do in climate change AI. So Climate Change AI is a voluntary initiative to catalyze impactful work at the intersection of climate change and machine learning. So exactly what we do is we build a community of diverse stakeholders. So as everyone of everyone here um, knows that climate change has a lot of different facets, like uh, it has different areas like climate science or power systems or energy systems. And it also has different stakeholders like uh, the governmental bodies, academia or researchers and industrial partners. So what we do is we kind of combine them. Uh, we, we create a platform where they can come together and discuss with each other and uh, collaborate to uh, you know, you know, uh, create uh, solutions using machine learning that can be used to tackle climate change. We also guide impactful work through educational resource and programs. Uh, on our website, you can find a lot of educational resource, which I'll come in later slides. And we also fill gaps in essential infrastructures like uh, fundings or tools or data sets. And we also advance the discourse by advising relevant players. Um, that's our website on the slide that you see here. Our website is climatechange.ai, where you can find a lot of different materials. This is our awesome team. And on the left, you see the core team members. And on the right, you see the advisory board who, which, who uh, most of the people here, including the core team members and the professors uh, or um, highly renowned industry professionals who are in the advisory board here. They are all uh, kind of uh, pioneers in their own field. Uh, so we have got a really uh, awesome team in here who work for the um, for, for different works on climate change and machine learning. So for this iterations of the workshop, uh, we have uh, we have the organizers as me, Hari. Uh, I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley. I work on uh, deep semi-supervised learning and smart buildings and other energy, you know, other energy systems. So basically, how we can uh, use how we can use less data and do semi-supervised learning in the case of uh, smart buildings where the goal is to have uh, energy efficient green buildings and also in different energy systems we have uh, we have most of the organizers present here i'll uh, i'll take their name and uh, feel free to um, you know introduce yourself so uh, next organizer is uh, kasia tokasa from ets Zurich. Um, hi everyone uh, is my video working? Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Kasia Pogarska. I'm a climate scientist and I mostly work with climate models, but I'm also very interested in learning about uh, machine learning techniques that can be used uh, to, to be implemented in climate data analysis. So I'm really looking forward to reading uh, your submissions and to the workshop. Great. Thank you, Kasia. Uh, Maria, you're next. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Maria and I work at the intersection of robotics and machine learning for the development of uh, wildfire detection and monitoring systems. Great. Uh, so Merrick uh, couldn't be here. Uh, so Merrick is uh, with Dakar, Univers Dakar American University of Science and Technology. And uh, Merrick has been really uh, instrumental in uh, different uh, machine learning and social development works. And uh, yeah, I hope, hope we'll see more again future uh, webinars or future, uh, you know, uh, different events that we do as part of the workshop. We have David. Hi, I, I'm David. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in computer science at McGill and Mila. Um, and I work on a lot of different uh, problems at the intersection of machine learning and climate change, everything from electrical grid optimization to biodiversity monitoring and um, accelerated cat catalyst design. Um, and the remaining organizers um, are, are, are not joining uh, today either. Yeah, Sasan Zhu uh, is a professor at TU Munich and she works on uh, remote sensing. She couldn't be here. And Yosua Benjo, as many of you know, uh, is a professor at Mila and uh, he is also a Turing Award winner. Uh, and he is kind of um, a pioneer in deep learning and other machine learning uh, methods. Great. Uh, 
and recently he has been really interested in climate change in different areas and how machine learning can be used for uh, tackling climate change. So uh, the past events uh, or, the, or the past iterations of this workshop has been uh, organized at many different uh, conferences and uh, we started with ICML 2019 and uh, in fact this is also an ICML in 2021 so it's good to be uh, continuing this effort for last two years. Uh, after that we moved to uh, COP25 in 2019 and uh, then NeurIPS which is Neural Information Processing Systems uh, 2019. Then we moved to Switzerland for the Applied Machine Learning Days 2020, uh, followed by another uh, machine learning conference uh, called ICLR in 2020. Then we also had a TEDx and uh, the last event that we organized was the same workshop at Neural Information Processing Systems or NeurIPS 2020. We have video recordings available for um, most of the workshops in here and uh, all, all of them are available in our website, which uh, I'll go uh, in the next slide. So these are all uh, a lot of different uh, CCI resources that we provide uh, in order to you know, build up a platform where uh, people from different uh, areas can come together and work together and work towards uh, using machine learning in the interest of uh, tackling climate change. So we have, uh, we have come up with a report which is really extensive. It has around 100 pages and it has uh, interactive summaries. So it has different, uh, it has different, all the different areas of climate science or climate uh, climate related areas like uh, climate science, climate modeling, arts, arts sciences, uh, power systems, and we also have how we also mention what machine learning techniques can be used in each of these, and uh, we have also prepared uh, interactive summaries of the paper. So uh, if you want to, uh, you know, have a summary, or if you are a fan of blog posts, you can go to interactive summaries and uh, read about our paper, and we also have sub some supplemental resources, and uh, we also have a forum where you can participate and discuss with other stakeholders. And uh, we also have a monthly newsletter uh, that we roll out with has a lot of different uh, interesting aspects like job postings. It has uh, uh, different fundings, uh, fundings available and all of those information that you can find. We have a YouTube channel and we also organize uh, Fortnite happy hours uh, where you can join. So it's, it's kind of a very informal setting where you can join and talk to other researchers and uh, find collaborators and all. So all of these are available in our website, climatechange.ai. So feel, please feel free to visit. Uh, next, the workshop. So uh, before we move to the workshop, we'll have a short poll and uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask everyone to start, I, I, I'll ask everyone to, um, you know, post your answers to the poll, which is very short, just four questions, just to gauge what kind of audience that we have here. So please go ahead and respond to the poll. It is completely optional. So if yes, you do not want to answer any of the questions, feel free not to. And it's also anonymous. anonymous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll give 30 more seconds for the poll. So complete if you want to.
Great, we just ended the poll and uh, the poll results look really awesome. And we have really great audience here. And uh, I just wanted to say uh, people who, uh, who mentioned machine learning as their primary area, you are in the right place. And also people who mentioned climate related areas, you are also in the right place because we have enough resources to have you um, have you, uh, you know, uh, talk to each other and uh, potentially uh, and build potential collaboration collaboration so that you can submit a successful uh, submission to our workshop. And uh, about the last question, which is uh, which is about if you're interested to be a mentor or mentee, uh, it's not a it's not a compulsory requirement. You can be either. So uh, it's under your discretion if you want some mentorship or if you want to mentor somebody. Um, Feel free to go ahead, and I, uh, I'll ask David to uh, go through the next slides. Uh... Awesome, thanks, Hari. Um, so this is just a little bit of an introduction to the what the workshop is. What is a, a workshop anyway? I realize not everybody is coming from the same field. So there is this, there is a a um, structure in machine learning conferences including in, in the conference ICML, um, which is one of the biggest um, machine learning conferences, that there are sort of sub tracks within it, which are called workshops for a, a day or two during the conference. Um, and these workshops focus on specific areas of interest within machine learning. So this is one of the workshops at ICML. There aren't that many. Uh, they're focusing on lots of different areas. Um, it is possible to attend just the workshop without attending the main conference. That is really common. In fact, maybe most of our audience comes for just the workshop. Some of the people coming will be coming from the machine learning world and they may have attended some of the rest of the, the International Conference on Machine Learning, ICML, but some people will be coming from policy, some people will be coming from, from startups, established industry, um, other areas of research like energy or climate science, and it's totally fine to just attend the workshop. You can find more information on just how to do that. Uh, this is a this is a, a webinar specifically focused on submissions um, and and mentorship in the in the workshop. But it's fine just to attend the workshop without making a submission, without being involved in, it in any other way. It's open to the public. You do need to register. You can see um, details on that on our website or on the main ICML website, which is there, icml.cc. Um, so our workshop includes a lot of different areas because climate change is a really cross-cutting theme. Um, it includes applications of machine learning in lots of different areas, you know, for example, agriculture, behavioral and social sciences, building cities, urban planning, carbon capture, sequestration, climate modeling and earth science, uh, climate finance and economics, climate policy, climate justice, many, many areas. And these are not comprehensive. Now, in all of these cases, it is the intersection of machine learning with that thing and also the intersection of climate change with that thing. For example, there are applications of machine learning to behavioral and social science that aren't related to climate change. And those are great, but they're not the subject of this workshop. Um, so it is machine learning plus climate change, but climate change can take any of these forms or other forms. Um, what is a submission to a workshop? So the way that what, what a submission is to this workshop is a non archival it is not a publication, it, it is something that is peer reviewed and gets presented at the workshop. This non archival thing, it may be relevant to those of you coming from fields where conferences or workshops are not considered to be publications. Um, this is not something that you have to consider to be a publication, you can submit to our workshop and as far as we are concerned, submit to anywhere else as well. With the exception being things that have already been accepted by machine learning conferences. Now, um, that's full machine learning conferences, a publication in a machine learning conference. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that doesn't matter. So anything is fair game, it, you don't have to worry, this is, not, this is not a publication, but it is peer reviewed and it is competitive. What a submission looks like is it is four pages in the case of papers track submissions or three pages in the case of proposals track uh, submissions. And we'll go into details about that in a moment. 
Um, that does not include appendices. It does not include references. Um, so you can add as many appendices as you want. This is sort of the culture in machine learning. You can add as many appendices as you want, but they, they don't count towards the main, the, 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 the page limit. And also the appendices might or might not be read by the reviewers because the reviewers are sort of only bound to read the main three or four pages. You should clearly explain obviously what it did, also why it matters. We'll talk about pathway to impact in a moment. Avoid jargon. Remember that these papers are going to be, or, or proposals are going to be read by people from a lot of different fields. Our reviewers come from many different areas and we try to match reviewers with submission areas. That said, not everybody will necessarily know some really technical term for a machine learning technique or um, for a speci specific cl uh, climate relevant domain. You can definitely say that, but make sure to provide citations or other references if you're using something that's fairly niche. Like if you're using a really, really niche method, I would definitely, I would definitely indicate you know, what, you know, where to find out more about that. Or if you're talking about a niche climate term, I would definitely you know, think about defining that. Um, you should explain and justify machine learning. This is at a machine learning conference, but one of the fundamental principles on, on which climate AI, uh, climate change AI runs events is that we are only interested in machine learning if it is useful and necessary. Now, there are a lot of situations in climate change work where machine learning is really, really useful, but make sure that you are explaining and justifying why machine learning is necessary uh, and useful for the problem that you are looking at. Um, and compare if there are existing methods um, not using machine learning or existing machine learning methods, compare, discuss why what you are suggesting or, or doing is an addition to the field and contributing to, 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 to meaningful climate impact. Um, examples of past accepted papers, you can see at all these various different past events. Um, I particularly would encourage people to look at NeurIPS, iClear, and ICML because those are the places where uh, the, the sort of the structure of, of accepted papers is most similar to, to, to this present workshop. Um, take a look at past accepted papers if you're interested in seeing sort of what, a, what the structure of an accepted paper is. Submissions are due uh, May 31st via a platform called CMT. Um, we will have a little explainer about CMT for the mentorship program. There are two CMT websites. There's a CMT for the submissions of papers, and there's a CMT for submissions of, of mentee applications. So we'll, we'll talk about that one, um, but um, there is a separate CMT for submissions of, of papers. Again, all of this is on the workshop website as well. Right, uh, well, tackling climate change requires translating ideas into action. So in your submission, you would need to clearly present the importance of your work to a broad audience, hopefully including relevant decision makers in industry, government, nonprofits, and other areas. Uh, and therefore, we kind of give you an example of how to convey the pathway to impact. Uh, so first thing, you would like to illustrate the link. Uh, many types of work from highly theoretical to deeply applied can already have very clear pathway to impact. Uh, so for example, directly, if you're improving solar forecasting to increase utilization within existing electric grids, this would be kind of obvious pathway to impact. However, there's some other type of work where you would need a few more steps to explain what exactly is the impact of your work. For example, if you're improving computer vision techniques for classifying clouds, which could help climate scientists uh, to seek understanding the fundamental climate dynamics and improve climate projections and climate models. So this is uh, also a pathway to impact. It just maybe requires a little more explanation. Secondly, uh, you could consider uh, your target audience. So try to convey with relative specificity why and to whom are you solving the problem at hand and why is this useful? So for example, if you're studying extreme weather prediction, uh, consider how you would communicate your key findings to a government disaster response agency, or if you're analyzing a supply chain optimization pilot program, what are the main key takeaways uh, for industries who may adopt this technology? So to ensure your work will be impactful, where possible, we recommend co-developing your projects with relevant stakeholders uh, to make sure you can easily communicate and uh, take into account who's your audience. 
And finally, we would like you to outline key metrics, uh, which is quantitative or qualitative assessments of how well your results or for your proposals, your anticipated results compared to existing methods or, or, or how can we quantify the impact of your methods. Uh, so, for example, you could give uh, a sense of the importance of your problem and your findings. Uh, for example, we encourage you to convey what particular metrics you choose are relevant from the climate change perspective. Uh, for example, if you're evaluating your machine learning model on the basis of accuracy, how does this improve accuracy on machine learning model translate to climate impact and why this accuracy is the best metric to use in this context. Also, you need to be clear and concise. So it, we, uh, the discussion of the impact does not need to be lengthy. It just has to be very clear. And you would like to, we would like you to convey the big picture because ultimately the goal of climate change AI is to empower work that meaningfully addresses the climate crisis. Uh, so try to make sure that from the climate beginning, you contextualize your method and your impact uh, of what is objective. Okay, so on the next slide, we'll have two type of submissions. Uh, good, good. Okay, perfect. Uh, we have two types of submissions, it's papers and proposals. Um, so papers track, it's work in, uh, work in progress that is published, uh, could be published or deployed. Um, so this would be kind of uh, your, if you did your analysis and you have results, you can write a paper and it's about four pages as the requirements earlier. You could also publish a data set, which we highly recommend. And the workshop is not archival. So if, even if you have a nice paper to publish in the workshop, it won't be archived and you can still submit it for a journal publication later or on if you wish to. Uh, and proposal track is more work in progress that is kind of preliminary. Um, so it's an early stage work that is detailed description of your idea, maybe some preliminary figures. And uh, that's what those submissions would include. You can also explain why you're solving your problem, why does it matter and how you plan to solve it. And that's why through part participating in this workshop, you can maybe get feedback on your idea, develop potential collaborations, or also improve on how you can later bring this proposal to a future paper. All right, and on the next slide, uh, we can see, you can see who should apply. So basically, we encourage all of you to apply because there's different uh, reasons for each of us. So we, we encourage researchers and practitioners using machine learning to address climate mitigation and adaptation or climate science within the very broad domain areas. And on our website, we list like many different areas of application within this kind of broad spectrum. If you're doing uh, any like machine learning related to those climate related topics or also, if you're coming from a climate background or this other background that we mentioned on our website, but you're trying to now implement machine learning to your work, uh, this would be equally welcome. Uh, so we welcome uh, academics and practitioners uh, in industry and government. And because this year the, the workshop has a virtual format, this makes global participation a lot easier than ever. So we highly encourage you to join the workshop. You don't have to present. You can also just attempt to watch if you'd like. However, if you would like to present, uh, we also have the mentorship program, which will be mentioned later on the next slide by Maria, where we can actually help you to uh, develop the proposal or the paper, depending on your working on. And we also invited uh, stakeholders in industry, government, NGOs, finance, and beyond to attend. So hopefully through the networking session, you're going to meet a lot of interesting people. So next I'll go, um, I hand off to Maria to talk about the mentorship program. Thank you, Kasia. Uh, I will delve a bit deeper in the process of uh, applying for the mentorship program and what it entails. In essence, the goal of the mentorship program is to provide a mentoring opportunity to help bridge the disciplines between machine learning and climate change areas. Uh, and being with such a broad scope, we welcome applicants from many disciplines and backgrounds. Uh, it is perfectly natural that many applicants from non-machine learning domains may not have experience submitting to machine learning venues, and in turn, many applicants from machine learning domains may be seeking guidance regarding the domain of application of their solutions. Uh, these are very complementary domains and uh, all can potentially benefit from the mentorship uh, to bridge these gaps. So our mentorship program will provide support in the weeks leading up to the submission deadline uh, with the goal of providing feedback on the mentee's paper or proposal submission uh, before the formal uh, review process. The application deadline for mentorship uh, for the mentorship program for both mentees and mentors 
is on April 28th. So who should apply? Uh, basically anyone considering submitting uh, to the workshop is encouraged to apply for mentorship. Uh, in turn for mentors, we are looking for a bit more experience. So uh, from the ac uh, academics uh, in advanced PhD uh, stages or even early career researchers or even professors keen on these kind of mentorship programs. Uh, we also welcome private or uh, public sector uh, professionals, as well as uh, from nonprofits uh, with several years experience. Uh, it's important to note that the, it is expected that the time commitment for this program is a minimum of five hours total uh, per mentee. Next, uh, we'll show a short video on how you can apply for the mentorship program. Welcome to this tutorial on how to apply for the mentorship program of the Tackling Climate Change with Machine Learning Workshop at ICML 2021. First, start at the Climate Change AI landing page. Then, go to the Events section and select ICML 2021. There, you'll find the complete information about the workshop, which is updated over time leading up to the workshop event. For information about the mentorship program, follow the quick link to jump to this respective section. There, you'll find the objectives of the program and expectations, as well as all the relevant information to apply, including the scheduled timeline and important deadlines. On the application section, you can find the links to apply, which direct you to the CMT system if applying to participate as a mentee, and a Google form if applying to be a mentor. For mentee applications, you get directed to the CMT login page. If you don't already have a CMT account, be sure to create one. After establishing your account, then access the previous link and you will enter the author console where you will submit and manage your application. Click on the create a new submission button that takes you to the application form. The form starts with the title and abstract of your project and the author details. Then you also have to select one primary area and one or more secondary areas. You will be asked to answer a set of questions regarding your project, such as its machine learning and climate change relevance, as well as the areas you are interested in getting feedback through the mentorship program. Next, you have three questions about your current position, previous engagement with climate change AI, and publication experience. Then, you can choose to answer a set of optional questions whose response will be kept confidential and can only be viewed by workshop organizers. Finally, at the end of the application form, you will be asked to agree with the statement of commitment for the mentorship program. Welcome to this tutorial on how to So to quickly overview the program timeline, uh, the application deadline uh, is next week on April 28th and shortly after uh, mentors and mentees will be matched and start the mentoring process up until the workshop submission deadline on th 30, May 31. So it's approximately, approximately one month uh, of uh, the mentoring process. Um, then follows a review period uh, until the acceptance notification on June 17. We very much look forward to your submissions. Uh, you can check out all the information uh, about the workshop on our website and reach out uh, with any questions regarding the workshop through the uh, this email climatechangeai.icml2021 at gmail.com uh, and to keep up to date with uh, upcoming events or news or job postings you can also subscribe to our newsletter. 
with that, uh, we close this part uh, of the presentation and open it up to questions. So I would request everyone to uh, put the question in the chat so that we can take everybody's question and answer it uh, so that it benefits everyone. So please uh, put your questions in the chat box and I'll take them one by one. Oh, okay, we have a first question. Uh, maybe I'll read it off. Uh, the first question is the mentorship CMT signed is for mentees and not for mentors. Am I correct? Yes, so, so the CMT side, the CMT side uh, is for mentees. So if you want a mentor and you want to be uh, mentored, which is the same thing. So if you want a mentor, then uh, apply via the CMT side. And if you want to be a mentor, uh, or if, if you want to mentor some people, then apply via the Google form. So there are two things, CMT for mentor, uh, if you want to be a mentee, and Google form, if you want to be a mentor. And both uh, forms are um, accessible on our website, and there's also more information there if you'd like to have a look. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat, or I guess you could also raise your hand and we can help you to unmute. And there's another question. Is it too late to start a proposal right now? It's, it's, I, I would say it's too, uh, it's not too late. I shouldn't say it's too early, but uh, the proposal deadline, you, I, I meant pro, um, uh, from your question, I understand by proposal, you mean the proposal for the main workshop and the deadline for that is May 31st. So by May 31st, you need to submit a proposal or a paper. So you are not at all late. Uh, take your time and submit it by May 31st. You don't have to know exactly what you're going to do before submitting some before submitting as a mentee as well. For all that there is like a description that you are supposed to put in of roughly what you want to do, that's to help in the mentor matching. It's not a commitment to do exactly that. You can change that as much as you want. It's just so that we don't match somebody with somebody with totally the wrong expertise. Exactly. Great, any other questions? Okay, seeing no other question, I think, uh... I think the webinar was very much self-explanatory or something, uh, but uh, feel free to email us uh, in the email address. Uh, I'll put it in, uh, in the chat. So it's called climate change uh, ai.icml2021 at the red gmail.com. Feel free to email us in this email address if you have any questions. Uh, and please visit our website, climatechange.ai, where we have enough resources to uh, match everyone with with somebody of uh, some complementary expertise that they are looking for, we also organize happy hours. So uh, I think some, I think one is coming up sometime. The next happy hour is in the first week of May. I think they alternated a couple of different times for different time zones. Again, encourage people to also sign up for our newsletter um, if you want to hear about other events, readings, job opportunities, funding, and stuff like that. We have some other questions. We have other two questions. So yeah, do do you um, do we have to follow the ICML format for the proposal? No, not at all. Uh, we encourage to use ICML format, but feel free to um, use whatever format is convenient for you. So as long as you uh, obey the page limits and uh, uh, you know you know follow the guidelines that we set forth about. Uh, you know, how to explain why machine learning is necessary and uh, all about the content part, feel free to use whatever format that is convenient for you. And CMT is the only way to submit a proposal. Right? Oh, it does have to be a PDF that you submit, um, but the PDF could have been generated in any kind of way. Um, yes, yeah, exactly. Sorry. Oh, and it does have to be anonymous. Remember to make it anonymous. That, that oh, yes. you if you if you if you do not if you do not anonymize that it, it is it is really important not to include not to include any information about who you are. Um, we want the reviewing process to be uh, exactly uh, to be totally impartial, and uh, we want yeah. everybody to have a fair chance. So feel free to uh, no, not feel free to. It's it's a must. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> don't include any information that would identify uh, your project, your your name, your organization, or your uh, big project. Right. Uh, so. Try your best to anonymize the submission as much as yeah. you can. Um, 
Yeah, we're not going to dive. We're not going. We're not. We're not going to try to de-anonymize you, but just d tr try not to include any information. Exactly. Yes. So this um, is an interesting uh, question. Uh, sorry, are we able to include links to demos? How can we maintain anonymity in this case? Uh, demos? There is. Uh, oh, sorry. There is one more question before that, uh, which we didn't cover. Which is: Is CMT the only way to submit a proposal? Uh, and yes. Uh, so uh, whether it is proposal or or uh, or uh, papers. The only way to submit to our workshop is uh, via the CMT website that you find in our workshop website. Uh, and CMT is uh, very much user friendly to use. Uh, but if you face any problem, just feel free to message or email uh, our email address that I provided. And to respond about the demos question, how does one send how does one send in a demo and maintain anonymity at the same time? Um, there are a few different ways that people do this. Um, one can, it depends on what format the demo is in basically. Um, if the demo is just like code, you can stick it in another GitHub repo or submit a, like a separate folder somewhere else with a link that doesn't necessarily have your names. If it is a demo that is a, an entire website, um, feel free to email us if you think that it's a really difficult situation where you need to include a demo that is a, a website is fundamentally de-anonymized. That's really, it's a difficult situation. We'll work with you to work out how to do that. Um, but ideally it's possible to um, anonymize that as well, or you could you know, create a video of it um, with, out any names being apparent, um, maybe, and um, upload that as well as, as submission. But also, I mean, the demo is going to be something that's optional for the reviewers to review anyway. The only thing that the reviewers will necessarily look at is the paper. Um, so the one, reviewers are not one, guaranteed to look at a demo. One very easy way is to create a new Gmail address and create a new GitHub account with an anonymous name and uh, upload that in the um, in the GitHub website that you create. So, uh, so there are some ways. Uh, but if you face any problem, just let us know. Uh, we'll try to try our best to help you in this case. Great. Um, any other questions? We also, if we if you make code publicly available, you don't have to make po code publicly available now. You can say code will be publicly available after it's accepted too. Totally. So if there is no other questions, so uh, we'll stop our recording here. And uh, um, if anybody is interested to stick around here and talk to others uh, in order to you know, know everybody or find some collaborators, we'll, we'll open up uh, multiple breakout rooms. Feel free to join and talk to each other if you want. And uh, we'll stop the recording now.